Okay, listen up. New Mexico has the highest rate of preteen alcohol abuse and adolescents who drink before the age of 15 are more likely to fail in school, become addicted to drugs or alcohol, or turn to a life of crime and even become sexually active at a very early age. But what could be most damaging are the effects of alcohol on the brain, which is the subject of Smashed. And Smashed is a documentary produced by our Emmy Award winning friend and producer, Chris Schuler. Welcome, Chris. We're so happy you're finally on the show. Thanks. This is great. Thanks for having me. It's so good to see you. And you know, you're so good at what you do. And uh, I before we discuss the research, what I really want to do for our viewers is, is show them a clip of Smashed great. so they can see exactly what we're talking about. And then we'll go from there. So Sounds let's perfect. take a look. Crazy. Alcohol is amazing. Alcohol is uncontrollable. Enticing. Everywhere. Available. We wanted to know the extent to which teenagers were resilient in the face of alcohol. In the face of alcohol assault. We know what happens when adults drink too much. We know that their prefrontal cortex is affected. We know that their hippocampus is affected. We know that their cerebellum is affected. And if you move that to behavior, we know that their organization and decision making is affected. We know that their memory is affected. We know that their coordination, their motor coordination and their ability to move well is affected after years and years and years of heavy alcohol use. But nobody really knew the extent to which adolescents who are drinking at a younger and younger age now might be resilient or might be at risk for brain damage due to alcohol. Our young people start to drink at young ages. They don't start in high school, they don't start in college, they start in middle school and even younger. The mean age is about 13, which means that kids are starting even as low as 11 or 12. But kids who start earlier are more likely to have a riskier pattern of drinking. New Mexico leads the nation right now in kids that drink prior to the age of 13. By the time a student turns 18 in America, they're going to be exposed to half a million alcohol ads. So we have half a million mental repetitions in our brain on how to get drunk. We know that teenagers drink very often at their own homes or at the homes of friends. They tend to binge drink, especially on weekends, you know, after that big game, um, you know, there's a big celebration and, and they drink four to five drinks in a setting or more. Alcohol is fun, dangerous, violence, expensive, trouble. Alcohol is poison, an industry, your deceiving friend. Wow, your deceiving friend, that one really And these were, we had all these kids together and we said, what is alcohol? And just give us a word, give us one really? word. And they just, all those words came up. And they, they, young people are very smart about this. They understand mm -hmm. the thing. And they know when they're being deceived. And yet a yep. lot of them still, yep. Yep, yep. They, they take the temptation. Oh, sure. And that's the problem. Sure. And I, I mean, this looks riveting. I'm already excited to watch this. I mean, it's a show about brain development and how people right into their late 20s can be affected by the binge drinking and all the things and the choices that they make even in adolescence. Well, and that's the thing. And th this research, we, we were real excited. The Mind Research Network that's here in town, uh -huh. it's amazing. Dr. Robert Toma, Dr. Uh, Feldstein Ewing, um, they have done this incredible research. It's okay. just come out in the last six months. What they thought was that the, the prefrontal cortex, the front of the brain, right. gets real technical but it's simple okay um, that's the last part to develop and okay. it doesn't fully develop until we're in 25 26 27 years really? old really which we everybody thought oh you're done by 18 no no no. 25 oh. 26 27 and the thing is they thought that the brain is elastic you know when we're young it's elastic you can drink and it'll bounce back it'll be fine and that's what they were testing Whoa. what they found out was that if you binge drink uh -huh. That's that's you know for guys four or five drinks in one setting for girls three or four drinks Which in one setting. Which makes them feel like they're cool. Right. Mm -hmm. If you do that on a regular basis, the brain doesn't bounce back. Oh in fact, gosh. attention, concentration, decision making, those things change for the rest of your life. Wow! By the decisions you could yep. make at 12 years old, yep. I'm I'm yep. really taken back by the fact that 
were the highest in the nation. I mean, that is shocking to yeah, me in the scary. first place. And you said 12 and a half is the, is the average age. age of first drink My in New Mexico, gosh. which is which is scary stuff. So so the interesting thing is this this part. And, you, you know, you were commenting when they were talking about the advertising yes, yes. over a half million ads by the time we're 18. That affects and us, you think, it? OK, well, they're silly. And they the fact is that mm -hmm. they do something called pairing. What happens exactly. is in your brain, it's brain research. OK, as you look at something and you see fun, whatever it is, and beer, fun and alcohol and if you see that it's riveted into your brain mm -hmm. half a million times subconsciously right then it's like okay beer is fun alcohol is fun it's obviously that way mm -hmm. or um, alcohol makes me sexier I get right. attracted you know I can you know that, that, that or Good I point. get I get happier well in fact there is no Less happy inhibited. chemical in alcohol. No, I mean, a lot of really people isn't. drink and they get depressed. There's no, there's no sexier chemical. There's no horny chemical. There's none of that's in there. Mm -hmm. It's your brain doing it. Exactly. And so um, what happens is, it, it's fascinating research. It really is. It seems like um, it is. The, the, um, when we have the first drink yes. and you're 150 pounds, okay. first drink, you get buzzed. Right. That's your full buzz. Really? That's it. At 150 pounds. 150 pounds, one drink. Second drink, you lose the buzz. Third drink, you feel worse than you did on the first drink. So what happens is when you explain this to young people, and you actually they've done all this research around it, we talk about it in the show. Right. Um, then, I mean, you can't say don't drink because kids are going to. I mean, they the fact is they're going to. Gonna, but if you can say, listen, here's the real deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, one drink, buzz. Second drink, you lose it. Third drink, it's worse. Why get all the horrible consequences? Good point. Very and good point. And so it's like, let's, let's mitigate what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's the binge drinking that really ruins the brain. It really is, huh? I mean, so because what you're saying is point. in that developmental stage, you're going to see effects by the time you're in your 20s of things and the choices that you've made when you maybe weren't thinking right. quite as clear and didn't right. have the right guidance. So let's talk about the most effective way that parents can address this. See, this is very good. A lot of parents think, and it's, I mean, we think of DWI and it's a horrible problem. Sure. And parents go, okay, it's my senior year. I'm going to, um, I'm going to have a party for my kid. I'm going to make everybody safe. We're going to take all their keys. They're going to drink in the over. house, mm -hmm. and then it's okay. The fact is, it's not okay if they're drinking. Right. It doesn't it's matter just still, that they're not driving. And I think if parents understand that, then mm -hmm. then there will be that. Parents, in fact, the, the number one thing they can do that the research shows. Yes. Have dinner with their kids. Really. Especially On with a regular teenage basis, girls. You mean? Yes. Why is Especially that? Especially with teenage girls. It, well, they think that it, it uh, develops communication, obviously. There's a connection sure. there that happens, and if it's a regular thing, that's great. The other thing is to have a rule in the house that there's not going to be any alcohol in the house. Okay. Period. Okay. Now, you think, oh, God, that's it. No, 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 that works. Okay. It actually, it, it really does advice. work. And with kids, the key thing there is they talk to each other. They do. So we, we say, keep each other safe, keep your friends safe. If you know this information, and we, we go into the whole thing. Uh, you saw Robert Zayas there from the Activities Association. Mm -hmm. um, they have a thing called Life of an Athlete. What they've discovered is if you drink to intoxication, yes. it lowers your testosterone so much wow. that you're training. You lose training for two weeks. See, now if two they knew weeks that worth ahead, of training. On why any, would they do this? Exactly. And so then if they're at parties, we have kids figure out ways to get out of it and still be cool. Like, wow. listen, I'm not going to perform as well. Well, so. you know, everyone's going to really want to watch this, whether you're a parent or August a child. 18th. August 18th on is the world 13. premiere? Right here on KRQE? Uh, yep, it's going to okay. be here on KRQE. Okay. August 18th, 7 to 8, and the second half hour, first half hour is Doc, second half hour, we're going to talk about solutions. Oh, I love and that. And how people can get involved and help each other. That's the best way to do it. When you present a problem, find some solutions, and I know that is going to be a very helpful thing for so many people And the live the premiere screening on July 29th. Oh. And that's going to be at the Medici Center on North Campus. Oh, good. So people if you want to get it, come and see it ahead of time next week. Yep. Perfect. Live. Well, Chris Schuler, we are so thankful you're here. Thank you Thanks for shedding for light me. on this very important topic. We want to keep we want to keep New Mexico safe and we want to keep those Absolutely. kids in the best condition they can be in for the rest of their lives. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And I have a question for you. Is an adoption an option? Well, coming up next, we're talking to an adoptive mother and attorney who can help you navigate right through the process. Stick around.